How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about The Mummy from 1959. This is Hammer's first film in their Mummy series, and, you know, Hammer, so it is, of course, directed by Terrence Fisher. Terrence Fisher is the guy that Hammer had direct a lot of their classics, Hammer's most famous director. Uh, this stars Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee as the mummy, and Yvonne Faro. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump right into the plot. I'm not going to do any spoilers, but I do want to say my opinions on all the things that happen during the movie and give you guys a basic understanding of the, the plot, but uh, no spoilers. But anyway, uh, this movie opens up with Peter Cushing and his father. They're on an expedition to uncover the tomb of Princess Anatka, who has uh, died on a pilgrimage. So her tomb is not located with all the other tombs where it should be. It's way out in the middle of nowhere. They eventually do find it and are warned by a man, Mohammed Bey, not to disturb the tomb. Of course, they're going to do it anyway. Um, they go in, but not Peter Cushing. You see, Peter Cushing's character has recently um, broken his leg. So, he wants to stay in the expedition, even though people are saying if you don't get it properly set, it could really mess up your leg. And he's like, we just found the tomb. What's a couple more days? So, he's outside the tomb. Everyone else is going in and looking at it. And his father is eventually left alone in the tomb. Why he's alone, he eventually discovers uh, a canister containing a secret scroll. When the canister is removed from its resting spot, it's on a little platform, it causes a hidden chamber to open where Christopher Lee's mummy is resting. He reads some stuff from the scroll and inadvertently causes the mummy to rise from the dead. Now, this scares him and puts him in a state of shock, and the mummy returns to his hiding spot. Everybody comes and finds him, and they don't know what happened, but it's a clear tragedy. Well, they all take all the artifacts and return home, but before they return home, they do the logical thing of blowing the tomb up. I don't know why they do this. I don't know if it was common practice. I'd like to think it wasn't, but knowing old-timey archaeology, it may very well have been. They want to reseal it, I guess, so no one wanders in there. I mean, I guess maybe it's dangerous. I don't know, but they wire a bunch of dynamite to the entrance and blow it up to seal it. So, yay. Um, now, Mohammed Bey, um, is angry at them for disturbing the tomb, and I guess presumably for blowing it up too, and he says that he'll dig in until he gets to the place where the mummy is hiding, and even if that takes years, he'll dig Christopher Lee out to take revenge on these people who disturb the tomb. And it does take some time, quite a few years for him by himself to dig all the way in there, and during that time, they go back to England, uh, Peter Cushing's father is in an asylum, and he doesn't really seem to be doing much better. Um, but other than that, life has moved on. The things are in the British Museum. They're being studied, and, you know, people are really pleased with uh, their new find. Well, all of a sudden, the dad starts to act up, and that's because he can sense the mummy returning to England. So, Mohammed Bey... Uh, arranges for the mummy to be transported, it accidentally falls in a big pile of uh, swamp water or quicksand or something like that and sinks to the very bottom, presumably with no hope of getting it out. And he's like, oh, that's okay. He returns later at night, does a special spell to summon the mummy out from the swamp, and that gives this mummy a cool, muddy design, makes him really dark and really grungy, just all covered in mud, you know, so it's a a cool way to redesign this creature a little bit. Um, and then after that, uh, he begins to use the mummy as a tool for revenge, uh, commanding him to go to different people, 
from the exposition and uh, expedition and kill them. Um, so he begins to use the mummy as a tool to take out these uh, people. And I guess we'll get to Hammer's uh, two biggest changes from the Universal script. Um, first of all, uh, you had the mummy, uh, the original one, who turned human and took on the disguise of Ardith Bay in the original Universal. So, in the original Universal Mummy, the mummy looked human for most of the movie. It wasn't until you get the sequels with Karis that he was primarily a mummy the whole time. Uh, Hammer obviously wanted to keep the uh, creature a mummy the whole time, because that's the, the title of the movie, you know. And it was obviously one of those things like, hey, we're doing a mummy movie, we want him to be a mummy. So they split him into two characters. Instead of Ardith Bey, who's secretly the mummy, you get Mahmed Bey, and he's secretly controlling the mummy. It's kind of interesting, because in, uh, in Universal's Frankenstein, they split Victor Frankenstein into uh, two characters, so you could have a good guy, and now you get uh, uh, Hammer splitting, uh, splitting Ardith Bey into two characters. So that's kind of interesting, but overall... Definitely a good idea, because you got to have the mummy as the mummy, right? Uh, the other thing is, um, why there is a plot with the mummy and his lost love, the Universal plot was all about doing whatever it takes to bring her back to life and, you know, get her back on his side. Uh, in this one, why there are elements of that plot, the mummy's main goal is revenge. You know, he, well, Mohammed Bey's main goal is revenge, uh, wants to kill all the people that desecrated the sacred tomb and he's you know really religious and wants to serve his gods and you know so it's not really all about the love it's more about uh getting revenge on these people so those are the two big differences um but i guess i'll get into uh, the flaws which uh this movie does have a, a few of uh, more than the other hammer uh classics uh for one uh, when you do get to see the mummy's backstory, it's really to uh, long and told with a ton of narration, and it, it goes on for quite a bit. The Universal one did have backstory, but it's pretty short and had that great uh, violent part of it, you know. Uh, this one, it goes on for quite a while, lots of Peter Cushing telling you the story, and it is relatively the same. Uh, the mummy falls in love with the priest. I mean, the priestess, and he's not supposed to fall in love with her. When she dies, he attempts to bring her back to life, but they stop him, and uh, they uh, prevent his soul from either going to a good or bad resting place and trap it on Earth, which is why he's able to uh, return later. So it's pretty similar to the Universal one. Um, also, you only get three characters that the mummy has to kill, you know, Peter Cushing, his dad, and this other guy who's there. Now, the mummy, if anyone gets in his way, will kill them too, but with only three characters to pick off, you don't really get a big reign of terror, and you don't get, you know, as many mummy-killing sequences as you could have, you know, so three characters is a little on the small side for, you know, uh, people you have to get to. Uh, but the biggest flaw with this is this is very much uh, like the Universal version. Uh, now, it does change a bit. I talked about the two big changes, but like I said earlier, with the mummy's backstory, you know, falling in love with the priestess and, you know, getting punished for trying to bring her back, pretty similar to the Universal backstory. You also get where the guy reads from the scrolls and he's the only one who sees the mummy and he goes insane, which did happen in the Universal version as well. Um, and of course they're followed, you know, by the mummy from Egypt back to England, much like the Universal version, which was much like Dracula, uh, whereas Transylvania back to England. Um, and also the whole bit with, uh, the lost love and reincarnation, I thought, okay, that's a major bit they're not going to do for this movie. Uh, but then you get to the end and this plot element kind of out of nowhere comes back and you're like, oh, okay, I guess we are doing that plot, uh, but in a much more looser way. Uh, but overall, 
why this isn't the best of the Hammer movies, I mean, you know, like I talked about, it sticks really close to the Universal. When you get uh, Horror of Dracula and Curse of Frankenstein, I really did applaud them for taking a lot of what worked with the Universal, but taking major risk and trying new things, and it felt like a new twist on the old story. The old story, but with a few new elements, and that really kept it fresh and interesting. Um, and then if you look at uh, Curse of the Werewolf, uh, that wasn't based on the same source material. It was sadly Hammer's only werewolf story, but it really did take things in its own direction, try new things, and it was really fascinating to see a completely from the ground up story and you really got behind that character in Curse of the Werewolf. This feels like a much more straight remake of Universal's Mummy. Like I said, the fact that it is two different people and the goal here is revenge instead of bringing a lost love back. It changes enough, but um, it is surprisingly close to the original Universal. Now, I don't want to say this is a, a bad movie. You still do get Hammer's stylings, that, you know, classic British stage play look, you know, the Universal monsters, but in color, and they're a little grimier, and, you know, um, not really too much gore in this one, but lots of grime with that dirty mummy, um, but, uh, you know, you also get, uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee doing really good parts, I mean, not as good as Dr. Victor Frankenstein and the Creature, but these are two very great actors, and they're always going to give a very good performance, and it's great to uh, see them. But, um, yeah, I'd say out of the, the main four, you know, uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, Werewolf, and Mummy, this is probably the weakest of those films. But overall, it's still pretty good. It's, you know, basically the Universal, a little darker and with that hammer feel. But um, overall, pretty good. This did get two sequels and a spin-off. Uh, the spin-off really just has Mummy in the title, and it's Egypt, but it's not really about a mummy. Uh, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Um, and maybe I'll cover that quick, because, I mean, it, it's a short one. You know, I can, you know, binge-watch all four of those movies pretty quick and then <laughs> do these reviews. Um, but, yeah, the shorter of the long series, because I think Frankenstein and Dracula had, like, eight, nine movies each, but... Uh, pretty cool, and I'll definitely get to the rest really soon. Uh, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping out the channel. I do about 95% horror here. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I definitely recommend sticking around. I'll put a relevant playlist at the end. Uh, probably my Hammer playlist. Anyway, I'll see you guys again uh, very, very soon. Have a good day.